Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Catholic Recon Testimonies from Reverts and Converts. I'm your host, Eddie Trask. Before I get to this week's guest, I want to remind you to share these videos, to reach out to me if you have a conversion story, subscribe, hit that bell, comment. I love reading the comments. I love hearing about so many of you that are uh, on a journey yourselves, and I pray for all of you. Uh, so this week's guest is Nikki Breyer. She and her husband, Bill, and we're going to get into all these details, but they've been married for 17 years and they have six children. They enjoy homeschooling, playing soccer, and taking care of their farm animals. They were raised in Buffalo, New York, but now their family calls sunny Florida their home. After their reversion in 2009, Jesus began working in their lives more than they could have imagined. The Breyer family is now on a mission to share Jesus' love and mercy within the Catholic Church, wherever they go. Nikki, welcome to Catholic Recon. Thank you. Yeah, at first I just want to, I want to say thank you so much for um, giving me the opportunity to do this because, um, you know, the saying from my lips to God's ears, and about eight years ago, I was asked to do um, a talk at a Magnificat breakfast, and that was the last time that I, like, publicly talked about what's, what's happened in our life. Anytime I have the opportunity um, if God should put someone in my path to, um, send that past talk to, or, uh, you know, just talk with in general, um, I'm always so grateful. And I always ask the Lord, please, you know, use our family to, to, sh you know, to show what you can do. And, um, actually this past Sunday, it was the second, the second readings, um, it was Ephesians chapter two, four through 10. And man, it just, it just hit me. I, I read it and I was like, Jesus, you wrote this for me. Like <laughs> it was Same so here. good. Right. Same yeah, here. Yeah, yep. yeah. And I think my favorite was, um, just about, because I really want to portray this, like everything that's happened in my life is, is all it's God it is, it's all God's handiwork. Right. And that was right in there. And it was nothing I can boast about. It's nothing I've done. It's nothing Bill's done. It is, just the hand of God and everything, every blessing we've had and in, in, in the miraculous things that have happened is I can take no credit. So <laughs> not at all. That's, that's great. I really appreciate that, that preface. Um, why don't we go to your childhood? Let me know how, how the journey began for you. So I was born into, um, cradle Catholic family and, um, basically, my mom, my mom loved God and she really loved Jesus. And what kind of led me on the path to like, even what, what, what later my destruction was that hole that we all have that we're looking for, you know, we're looking for someone to fill, right. A thing, um, you know, and just people, um, alcohol, drugs. And so, my mom, as much as she loved God and loved Jesus and how she was raising me, like, again, just here we're Catholic and I made my sacraments and stuff. And, but there was no, there was no true catechesis really, even for my mom, like, and my dad, um, my mom and dad were together until I was about five. And then, um, let's see. So my mom and dad separated. And then after that, um, it just, it ended up, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't like uh, a terrible, like I didn't grow up in like abuse or anything like that, but religious wise, it was kind of, we went to church sometimes, <laughs> not, not, not like, you know, super frequently, um, but I think some of the key, the key things and that happened in my life, as far as like, I'm concerned. Um, and again, with my mom, I knew she loved Jesus. I knew she loved God. And, and we had our, she had us get our sacraments, but, um, I had, when I was little, I was about two years old. And this was definitely like my first experience with Jesus. That was, and I, I went out and told my mom, I remembered everything. And I long story short, I had smashed my face I, on a pointed garden stone. And when 
we, my, we were picking strawberries. And so what, from the trauma of that, like they said, you know, your teeth aren't going to heal. You, you know, she's going to have a lot of damage done to her, her face and stuff. And so my mom was just, she was obviously super upset and she, you know, she tucked me in bed and, um, she just said like blood was just like oozing out of my pacifier and there's just like damage all over my, all over my mouth. And so, um, I went to sleep and in the morning I woke up and she said, you know, your uncle had gone out and got you a big wheel. The big wheel was sitting in front of your bed. And she said, you just ran right past it. And you ran right to me. And you said, mom, mommy, mommy, like last night, Jesus came to me and he kissed my, he kissed my mouth and he kissed my boo-boos and he said, everything was going to be okay. And, um, and so when I first reflected on that, I thought, wow, like it's so prophetic how God did that with me because there was so many other times where he picked me up and kissed me again and was like, okay, come on. Like, you know, let's go, like, let's do this again. And, um, you know, I get kind of have it happen a couple of times and, uh, but with my mom, so she, you know, she, she just said like, she had no doubt. She had no, you know, it was just, she knew she was like that, you know, Jesus did that. And my mouth healed completely. All the things that they said, you know, that that's not, you know, she's going to have damage and stuff and it healed perfectly. And, uh, and then six, six years later, I smashed my face on a concrete driveway again <laughs> <laughs> and my teeth like shattered in my bottom lip. It was bad. Um, so yeah, so that was crazy. And, uh, but Jesus worked a miracle the first time for sure. And actually even the trauma from that, it could have been a lot worse. So I always go to that because that was definitely my first, that was my first encounter with Jesus. Like, and it was a pretty big one. Like, you know, that was, that was definitely something really special. And so then let's go into, uh, the rest of my childhood was really just, you know, kind of going through the motions of, um, just no real firm teaching of like why we believe what we believe in the Catholic church. Um, you know, I love Jesus. I love God. I was never opposed. Love mama Mary. Um, you know, the, the little bit about the saints, you know, that I knew I always, you know, felt fascinated, but, um, just no true real, like, this is why we, we believe what we believe. And, um, that definitely impacted, you know, my choices in the future, you know? So, yeah. So that was, would you say that that, I guess, framed everything up until, let me ask you this. Did you have at any point in your even teenage years where you had formation or anything that helped you get grounded or, I mean, based on what you just said, I'm assuming not really, not until after things went south. Yeah. So I would say when the first, the first time that I really had, um, again, this was, this was definitely like, I say like, this is my second time Jesus picks me up. Right. So I'm just as a, you know, as my, during my teenage years and stuff, just not, just didn't make good choices. I mean, hung out with the wrong crowd. Um, just so I was working at a salon and at the salon I worked at my boss, his daughter, she approached me at one point and she started talking to me about healing masses. And, um, and I was like, because, oh, I remember I was talking, cause I was telling her about my dad. My dad has really bad health problems, like in his back and stuff. And, and so at this time I was probably about, I was probably like 18 about, I was probably 18. And so I'm telling her about my dad and she says, Nikki, bring him to a healing mass. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. It's a great idea. Like, yeah. Now let me just, you know, here I'm getting excited to help my dad, but like the state of my soul and like, is just a wreck. Like I had a boyfriend I was living with at the time and, uh, just not good, <laughs> not good at all. And, and so, but in my head and what I was doing, it was like, I, I had a job. So basically worldly, like I was doing well worldly, like I had a really good job. I was making good money. I was doing well for myself at my age, you know? And, um, so, you know, just considering like, it wasn't like I was basing my, how my, my progress of my journey with Jesus was at all. It was just 
Oh, this is how you're, you know, this is how you're doing it in, you know, your life and you're doing well. And so, um, as you know, I'm, I'm living, I have this boyfriend I'm living with and, and, uh, so I, we, we go, I get my dad, I call my dad and he agrees to go to this healing mass. Well, him and my mom weren't together. I call my mom and she, she agrees to go too. And my brother, my brother, they all agree to go. And actually one thing I should mention was this was definitely something that was significant, even though I was such a little lost soul, but there was something in me, um, that, oh, I did attend not consistently every Sunday, but there was a draw that God put in me to go to mass, even if I was by myself. Wow. And so one of the funny things I would say, I would like go drive past my mom's house and be like, mom, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go to church. He's like, nah, I'm busy today. And so this is funny coming later in the story, but I was like, she, you know, she, oh, I got stuff to do. I can't come. And so I would, I would go, I would still go. And even in the, the depths of the ugly of the sin I was living in, I still saw value in that. I didn't understand really what it was. I had never been taught what it even meant to live in a state of grace or to like not receive Jesus. If you're in a bad state, um, you know, I didn't learn that until, you know, a couple of years later. And so, you know, I, I, again, I'm, you know, here I'm going to church and stuff. So again, I'm thinking I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm doing well compared to, you know, other people and stuff. So we go to this healing mass and my dad was there, my brother's there, I'm there. And so there was this man, his name was, um, Tony Cabello, I think. And so he, you know, he's up there and he's praying over people and he had like a really cool story. And so we start, you know, I'd never been anything like this. And we start walking up that the middle aisle and whatever, and me and my brother and both of us, my dad actually wouldn't go up. He stayed in the pew, but he at least went. And so me and my brother are walking up and just all of a sudden, just uncontrollable sobbing, just, and again, I'm, I'm sitting there going, well, I'm not here for myself, you know, like I'm here to save everyone else and, and just uncontrollable sobbing. And so I'm, I just, one thing that was like, so incredible that, it, that I, I noticed as I was walking up is I just saw an enormous crucifix. Okay. Like larger than life in my face, huge Jesus is on it. And I looked at it and I was like, it, it just hit me. Like he did that for me. Like I couldn't believe, like it just, it was so the Holy spirit, just completely, you know, and, and, and so amazing that here I am so broken, so sinful. And like, you know, and Jesus is like, you know, breaking through that and, and, in ways that I just would never ex have expected. And so it was so funny because again, here I'm thinking I'm fine, you know? And, and so I was so touched. I walked up and, and Tony's like, why are you crying? And I was like, I, I have no idea. I literally don't know I'm crying at all. And he just, he said, it's, it's the Holy spirit. He's like, it's totally the Holy spirit. So right then and there, Jesus just, I was lit on fire and I went home to my apartment that I had with my boyfriend. And I was like telling him like everything that had happened and I was ready to just change my life. And I had, you know, the little bit of religious items I had, I had a rosary, maybe a prayer card, you know, probably a ratty old rosary. That's probably a hand-me-down, probably my mom's like antique thing, you know, that was in my jewelry box. And, and I, I don't know where I even got the movie, but I, I sat down and I watched the passion. That was like, that was like, how I was like, I got to do something with this. Like, I, I am just so connected to Jesus right now. Like I need to, you know, connect with him more. Like, I just didn't know what to do with myself. And I just bawled my eyes out. I just sat on the couch by myself and just bawled my eyes out. And, and even to this day, like the passion is so, that movie is just so, such a part of my heart. Like that Jesus, like that is my Jesus. Like I see him and I'm just like that, you know, that is my Jesus. And I just, I just love it so much. So, so after that, I kind of like to say that I didn't have, I didn't have the tools yet to like, again, here, Jesus is picking me up. He's get brushing me off again. Like, okay, let's try this again, you know, and let's get you on a good path. You were 18, you said at that point, or? Yes, I was about, yes, 18. I was about 18. And so, um, and so, yeah, so I just, you know, I'm, I didn't, I didn't have anyone to, to really guide me. Like I didn't have someone to say, okay, like, this is where you go with this, you know, like, let's, I don't know, let's stay close to the sacraments. Let's, you know, go to adoration. You know, I, I just didn't, I just didn't know. And so it kind of fizzled out. And within 
probably not long after that is actually when I met my husband. And, um, and so we, and so here, okay. So at the time I'm living with this boyfriend currently still, and this story is just so crazy. So we, I loved, absolutely loved my boyfriend. I loved his sister and, uh, it was her birthday and we were supposed to go to Canada because we lived in Buffalo and Canada was, you know, 10 minutes away. And, uh, so she wanted to go off her birthday and she's like, Nick, I want you to come with me. And so I went out and got, uh, you know, my little outfit for, you know, the party and stuff. And so me and my boyfriend that night ended up having a fight and he left. He took all the stuff that, you know, that I had bought. And I, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to stay home. It's okay. Like I told her, I said, just you guys go and have fun. And I'm just going to, I'm going to stay here. It's not a big deal. And so, uh, she goes, no, I'm going to drive and get your stuff. She drove like an hour out of her way to go get my stuff to come and get me, which again, is just so funny. And, uh, so here she comes and gets me where we, we go to this bar in Canada and, um, the girls who I'm with, they're single. And so they're like, Oh, Nikki, you know, go, go get that guy over there. Tell him to come hang out with us or whatever. So I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And, and I don't care. I have a boyfriend, like, sure. And so all of a sudden I see my husband, Bill, I just looked at him and I was like, I was, I just loved him. I didn't even know him. And I just loved him. I was like, he is, I, 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 I never experienced that. And then I just noticed at one point, like he was standing like under the bar and there was like this sign. And I noticed there was an arrow and he was standing right under it. And it literally said, it starts here. And I'm just like looking at this and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like I have a boyfriend, you know, I'm literally with his girlfriend or his sister, his sister right now. I'm like, like, this is terrible. So of course my little friends I'm with, they're like, oh, Nikki, go, go get, you know, go get him. They see Bill too, because he's super cute. And they're like, go get him. And I just froze. And I was like, no. And they're just like, well, what's the big deal? You know, like you have a boyfriend, who cares? So I go up to Bill and uh, I was like, oh, hey, like, you know, my friends want to talk to whatever. So he comes over. And of course, what does he do? He gravitates towards me and just talking to me the whole time. And it's just super awkward. And so, you know, I'm thinking, well, he's just, you know, he's probably some Canadian boy, you know, my friend who ended up going out to the same place who I worked at the salon with, she comes up to me. She's like, Nick, you know him? And I go, no, I don't know him at all. And she goes, I went to, she goes, Nikki, I've gone to school with him since like kindergarten. And I was like, are you serious? She's like, yeah. She's like, I, I, I know him. She, and she's like, tell me like the mutual friends we have and stuff. She's like, that's, that's like our friend's boyfriend's friend. Like, and I was just like, oh my goodness, like how crazy. So we end up, we're going to leave and we still have debates on this, but Bill asked me for my phone number in front of my boyfriend's sister. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry. Like I, I can't. And he got so mad. He was so mad because he, he had never asked anyone for their number before. <laughs> so he was so mad. So he, so he ends up, you know, he storms off. And so we leave and I couldn't stop thinking about Bill. I just, I was just, I'm like, this is just crazy. And so I knew like in the back of my head, like the situation I was in with the boyfriend I currently had was not good. And, and so I was like, well, once I get out of that, you know, then I knew I had the connections with my friend to be able to like, you know, rekindle. So, uh, so anyway, so a couple months go by and we end up calling Bill and he was coming home for Thanksgiving from college. So we hung out and pretty much since then, you know, that point, like we were together and, uh, and the, what, what really drew me to Bill was not only did I just, God was just grabbing, it must've just been having, you know, gravitational pulls towards him, like, but his family went to mass and I remembered feeling like, okay, like this is actually like, this is good. Like is, is poorly taught as I was, I'm like, this is good. Like, this is something to build a foundation on. We could have something with this. And, uh, and that was, again, just totally God, just, you know, putting those little whispers into my heart of, you know, of, of how important these things are. And I didn't even know. So, um, we end up, we start dating within, 
I think six months, I was pregnant with Emma, my first daughter. And I was perfectly fine. I hid it because I wasn't proud of myself. Um, so we were 19, 20, 20 at this point. And so I wasn't proud of myself and, you know, and Bill wasn't either. And he, Bill came from a very normal, loving home. Like I had a little bit more chaos in my, in my upbringing, but, um, Bill, Bill had more normalcy. And so I knew it was definitely going to be a little more of a, a challenge prob- you know, for his family than, than mine, to be honest. So, so, uh, we just kind of hit it for a little while, but we did intend, like we, we wanted to get married. Like that was definitely something that it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm pregnant and shoot. Now what are we going to do? And I look back and, and I'm so grateful in so many ways that like, we could have so easily walked down the road of this is not a good time. Yeah. Bill was in school. He was in, he was going to school in Hofstra. And, you know, I remember like, I found out I was pregnant. I walked into the, the room where Bill was and I told him and he just smiled. And I mean, I was living at my grandma's house at this point. Like I'm living at my grandma's house. He's going to school at Hofstra and, and he just smiled. There was no panic. There was like nothing. It was just, it was fine. And so I'm always thankful. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that I never, that was never something I was like, okay, well, you know, we can't do this. We don't want to be embarrassed or so I, it gives me a lot of, um, it gives me a lot of compassion and empathy for people who go through, you know, who go through that, that those situations and not to be so judgy, you know, um, even in following, you know, situations and stuff that, that we came across as, as years went on, um, that I was put in situations and put myself, I should say, put myself in situations where I could have so saw myself easily being like, well, I can't, this would be absolutely absurd if I had a baby right now. So, um, but so we end up, um, we did end up a year, a year to the date of when we started dating, we got married and God put on my heart. There was no question at all. We were going to have, you know, we were going to get married in the church and I never thought about anything else. It was just like, and luckily the priest that we had, um, God rest his soul. He, he was very good with me. Like, you know, I was getting, you know, as time's going on, I'm getting bigger and bigger, bigger, right? Like every month I'm pregnant and and so I said, I really want to, I want to get married before I have the baby. Now, the sad part is, you know, clearly here I am pregnant. I never had anyone to like pull me aside and be like, hey, honey, you know, maybe you should uh, consider going to confession, you know, like before the sacrament of marriage, you know, it's like, it's kind of obvious you need to do that. And um, so, you know, again, we just, we didn't have that. We didn't have someone guiding us in that, in that way. I was going to say, so, uh, consistent with the beginning of the story, not having yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. And so, um, so, you know, I'm just like, God just keeps giving me like these little things, right? Like he's just like, just hold on, you know, just like, in in throughout my whole life, it was like, it just, you know, he was giving me little things to be able to like, where he would finally be able to like really work in my life. And so, um, here, so we get married and that day of our wedding, what the best, very best part of that day was truly the mass. Um, it went so smoothly. It was so beautiful. And, and actually I just was telling someone today, I'm like, I have two regrets on my wedding day. I said, the one was no one guided me to confession. I said, and the second was my dress was so immodest. And I'm like, you know, it's just, that it, it, it had, it just has to kill Jesus to see that, you know? So modesty is something that I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, really redeeming my life because I got a, I got a, I got a lot of reparations to make. So, um, but anyway, I just, that besides that, the mass was beautiful. And, um, so we get married and we have Emma about a year later, I get pregnant with my second daughter. And at this point, um, Bill had an engineering degree, but it was like 2000 around 2009. So stuff was I don't think the economy was really, really great, if I can remember correctly. And so Bill was having a hard time finding a job. And so he approached me and and he said, you know, I really wanted to join the Naval Academy, but his vision wasn't wasn't good enough. And so I I see that as like God probably knew if Bill had gone off to do that, you know, I would never probably would have met him. So that's probably a little God wink. And uh, 
So he says, I really want to, I really want to see if I can join as a Naval officer. And now that I have my engineering degree and, and I really wasn't thrilled about it, but there was a part of me that was like, you know, I don't want to hold you back. If you really feel like you want to do this, um, you know, it's, it's a stable thing. Like we, we can do this. And so in those couple of years where, you know, I went from, you know, we got married and we were young. So I had Emma when I was 21. So I'm about what, 23 now, maybe. And, um, and we were young and, and, you know, God bless Bill. And, and he just, he wasn't, he was not making great choices. Um, and so what was happening was I was happy being a wife and a mom and, uh, just, you know, just, I was loving it. I was like, this is, this is great. I had no, I had no like second guessing of, you know, we were happy. We built, you know, me and Bill laugh a lot. We have a, you know, really fun, fun, good relationship. And he's definitely my best friend, you know, for sure. And, um, so everyone, once stuff started getting really rocky, they were really like, wow, I'm so surprised because things seem, seem so well. And I think that's definitely something to really think about because stuff can just happen out of nowhere. You know, you just, you give the enemy a little crack and it's over. So, so anyway, so here's Bill. So basically the relationship that we had was fun and silly, but it wasn't, um, Bill didn't really know at that point what it really meant to be like a strong Catholic husband or, or a dad. Um, there, you know, and, and so there was times where I had to call his parents, like to, you know, to help me and stuff. Cause I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not sure where Bill is right now. That was kind of what was going on. And, um, you know, that was it, it, but I just kind of, I think I was in a place where I, I, I probably at this point I was like, well, I kind of made my bed. I'm, I'm sleeping, you know, made, I'm sleeping in it. And not that I didn't love Bill, but I'm just like, well, it, it'll be fine. You know, things will work out or whatever. And that was just kind of my attitude, even though it wasn't ideal. Um, so just hold on. When you said you made your bed, are you talking about related to past, like this? Yeah. Season, when you were yes. Not, as a teenager. Yeah. And- yes. Yes. And like, what's basically led me to where I am. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm married and I have a couple kids. And so I'm just like, well, you know, I got to just make the best of this, you know? And there, you know, there wasn't any, but we, again, not fully catechized whatsoever, but we did, um, we did go to, we go, went to church. We went to mass and uh, we had the girls baptized. And I laugh because <laughs> the poor girls were baptized at like six months old because we had to wait for good party weather. And like, now it's like, man, I'm like, can that priest come to the hospital? Like, as soon as that baby comes out, you know, like it is just, it's so funny. I'm like, girls, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. I waited so long. And, um, but as you grow in your faith, you know, you obviously understand the importance of things and So, so anyway, so, uh, so Bill signs up for, for the Navy stuff and, uh, and he goes and, and again, I'm fine. I'm like, okay, you know, he's going to be gone for three months. This is fine. So one of my good friends, um, she had a friend who was a single dad and she was like, Nikki, you guys should hang out with the kids and blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, girls and boys can't be friends. (laughs) That just that's just not reality. It's just, it just doesn't work. And so I'm seeing the picture, especially from like, you know, the, the past examples I've been shown, right? Like relationships were kind of disposable. If it wasn't working out, if things weren't going the way you thought they were going to go, it was like, well, you just kind of move on, you know, even if you were married, it really, you know, it really wasn't, wasn't a big deal. And that was kind of my view. You know, I had a lot of people in my family that were divorced. And, and so, uh, so Bill leaves and I mean, the enemy knew it was the perfect opportunity. It was like, you know, I was so weak in my faith and, you know, here's Bill, he's gone. And I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, well, it's not really that great anyway. Like, I mean, it's not terrible, but you know, he's not, he's not. Bill wasn't Jesus, right? Because Jesus is perfect. He fills that hole. So he wasn't that for me. Like there was still emptiness. And so I'm just associating with that with, okay, well, I'm going to find the next person who's going to fill that hole. And, um, 
so here comes this guy with, you know, single dad with his kids. And it was like everything that Bill wasn't this like verbatim, like the things I would say or think were like that bothered me about Bill. Like this guy was just all those things. And, and so I'm like, oh, this is the answer to my prayers. Like God's, God's doing this, like to help me. And so here's poor Bill who's going off to boot camp. And as he's in boot camp, he is becoming a better man. He's like, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better dad. Well, here's me paving my way to hell. So Bill's, you know, doing great. And, and I'm doing the complete opposite. And so he's expecting to come home because I was, I was doing so well before he left and things, you know, as far as I was concerned, I was happy and stuff. And, and so, uh, he's thinking, I'm going to come home and things are going to be great. You know, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be really a good dad and a good, a good husband now. And so he basically comes home from boot camp, And I said, Bill, I just, I don't think this is, you know, I don't think this is going to work. And, uh, I just basically, I, I, I'm pretty sure I told him like, I, you know, there was someone else and, um, and he was very upset and I was shocked. And I know that sounds crazy. Um, I was very surprised. I was like, wow, like you actually do care about me. Like in, in, uh, and I just remember kind of being like, I just expected to tell him this. And then he would be like, okay, you know, we'll move on our separate ways. And that was not the case. And so then I was really stuck because I'm like, okay, well now I have this guy over here promised me the moon and the stars. And now Bill is telling me that he wants to do the same. I'm like, and it just turned into an absolute mess. So Bill starts reaching out to my mom. So this is, this is really where God is just so good. So my mom, who, you know, I was trying to pick up to take her to mass. She ends up getting married to this um, man who's uh, Baptist. And she's trying to convince him why he should be Catholic. <laughs> and he's like, you don't even go to church. Like, how are you going to tell me to, like, why I need to be Catholic? So, but it was so great because my mom just, she was like, I'm going to find out right now. And she started listening to EWTN and she starts really like learning about her faith. And so as she's doing this, you know, I remember, I remember calling her and saying, you know, mom, um, this is not working out for me and Bill. And it's, you know, it's going to be better. And I, and honestly, my mom didn't really like Bill. My family really didn't like Bill. And they thought he was arrogant and they were like, we don't see, we don't know what you see in him kind of thing. And um, so I didn't think they'd care. You know, I'm like, well, they're going to be happy, you know? And my mom was like, so here she's on this journey with Jesus. And, and she just goes, no, she goes, no, I am, I am not letting you do that. And I was like, wait, what? And she goes, no, you are not going to repeat what I did. And she's like, you are going to, you're, you're going to work and, and you're going to, you're going to save this marriage. And I was like, I'm like, because Bill had been calling her and kind of confiding in her, like, help me, you know, please help me, like, help me to, you know, to, to make things right. And, uh, and to get Nikki back pretty much. And, and so, uh, so here's my mom and she's, you know, learning about her faith and she's like, tell me this stuff. And, and, and she goes, I want you to, uh, I want you to start praying the divine mercy chaplet. And she goes, I just learned about it. And I want you to, I want you to start praying it. And so I'm like, okay, Ma, sure. You know, like, you know, I'm, I'm really not buying it at that point. And, um, and she's just, I mean, she's really adamant. And basically my whole family who, who really loved me and, and cared about me and, and they just didn't, you know, it's such a, it's such a normal thing that, that happens in, in the world nowadays. It's like, you see someone who's making bad choices, but you're like, I want to still love them and, and let them, they're just letting you continue and sin basically. And one, and this is another thing Jesus always reminds me of too, is like when all this craziness was happening, when me and Bill were going, we went through a three year um, up and down roller coaster of sometimes we'd be together. Sometimes we wouldn't. <laughs> sometimes I'd have a boyfriend. Sometimes he'd have a girlfriend. It was like crazy. And so, but one of the things that like, I really, I really think is important for people to understand is people would look at me and I was joyful. I loved everyone. Um, and when I say to people, especially some of my family members, like, 
guys, what I was doing at that time was awful. It was terrible. I was living in really bad sin and they just, they don't want to hear it. And they're like, no, you were fine. You were fine. I'm like, no, I wasn't fine. Like you guys were loving me and I was loving and joyful and happy and silly, but it, I wasn't fine. And my, my, the state of my soul wasn't, was an absolute wreck, you know? And, and there was no one there to be like, you know, until, you know, Jesus, you know, was with my mom, like, and then my mom was the only one really who was like, Nick, no, like, I'm not going to just let you do this. And so at first I was, you know, like, she's telling me things like, I remember she told me, she said, don't you dare receive the Eucharist. And I was like, who are you? Like, what are you serious? Like, is that even a thing, mom? Like, you know, and she was like, don't you dare. And I, and, and I look back and I'm like, I am so glad that she said that to me because I'll tell you what, even if I was upset or had the, who are you to tell me that I'll tell you what my little wheels were going. And I was like, okay, why, why would she, why would she tell me that? You know, what does that mean? And, um, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't even, and how sad is that? Like, I knew, I didn't even know what that meant. And, um, and so, so, so again, here's Bill trying to, you know, talk to my mom and stuff and have her help me and try to talk me into, you know, sanity. But I think once, you know, and it's so crazy, it is so crazy for me just to think that I was such a little lost soul. I was so confused and that I looked back and I was sincerely thinking the choices I was making, there was nothing wrong with them. There was nothing. And that it was from God. And so, you know, God's doing this, like he's, he's allowing these things to happen. And so one of my big takeaways from that is like, that I now obviously like sin makes things gray, right? Like, so God is so black and white and, you know, you get so blinded by sin and you can't see straight, you know? And again, this helps me to be so compassionate with people again, because I'm like, you, you really can't understand. You just can't, you don't have the ability. And here I'm begging and pleading with God. And I'm like, God, and I'm sincere. If this isn't good, if this isn't what you want, you you have to show me because I'm thinking it is, you know, and he did. I mean, he showed me like, you know, I remember at clear as day, I was driving down the thruway and I remember talking to blessed mother and just being like, help me, you know, show me the right way. Show me what's, show me what's right. And that's basically all I could really get out, you know? And the guy, the one guy that I was kind of dating at the time, just an absolute fiasco happened that night. And God showed me, he said, you want to see what you're choosing. You want to see what you're picking. This is it. And he showed me and he showed me it was ugly and it was bad. It was really bad. And, um, and so then I had, I had this all of a sudden, okay, now I'm scared. I'm like, I want to go back to, I want to go back to that comfort zone of like, okay, I'm going to go back with Bill and make things work. And a lot of time had gone by at this point. And so, but what I would do is, you know, if the boyfriend I had at the time, if he wasn't doing so good, then, you know, I'd be like, okay, Bill, let's work on stuff. So this happened frequently. And so it got to the point where uh, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to make it work now. So I go to pick up the, we were like meeting in a parking lot to, he was going to pick up the girls from from me. And, and then, uh, so I got in his truck and I go, all right, like, you know, let's, let's do this. Like, let's make stuff good and, he, and you know, fix it, whatever. And he's just like, he wouldn't even look at me. He was so hurt and disgusted. Um, and again, not that he was, he was no angel by any means, but I was definitely, you know, I was definitely one in the press <laughs> for the choice that I was making. And my sins were a lot more public. So I had a lot more, uh, you know, there was, I had a bigger audience and, so for him, it wasn't as, it wasn't as, um, it wasn't as out there as mine was. And so, uh, so he, he just, he wouldn't even look at me. He was just absolutely disgusted. And he just said, I, I really, I think he might've told me he hated me. Get out of my truck. Um, you make me sick. <laughs> and I just lost it. So I, I'm just like, okay, now I'm re- like, this is bad. Like, so I've ruined not only my life, I've ruined my daughter's lives. I've ruined Bill's life. And like, everything is just now this, and Jesus, this, this was my rock bottom. 
Like this was, this was it. And so I get in my car and I, I was going to my grandma's house and, uh, and later, I don't know how off or how far after, but Bill did not tell me, he said, you know, I, I called your grandma and told her you were coming and that you were really upset. And I was like, oh, you, so you did still care, you know? And, um, and he did, I mean, obviously that's why he was so upset. If he didn't care, he wouldn't have been upset. So, but I was, but it was what I needed. I needed that rock bottom. I, cause that was pivotal. And so I'm bawling my eyes out his, in his stairs. I call my mom and I go, mom, and she had been intensely praying the divine mercy chapter for me, like, and Bill and the girls. And, um, intense. She goes, you know, Nikki, we were on the floor at three o'clock every day with our faces on the floor praying for you. She said, I wasn't just scared for you and your choices. She goes, I also had two little granddaughters that now I'm thinking, okay, what in the world is going to happen to these two beautiful little girls? Because now Bill is living with a bunch of guys, you know, by himself. I'm, I think I had my own apartment at that time. And as you know, like once that door of ugliness is open of sin, it's like the floodgates are open and our kids are not protected anymore, you know? And, um, so my mom was just very, very adamant about, you know, she was really praying. So I call her, I'm in hysterics and she's like, all right, you ready to work for this now? And I was like, yes, I don't care what you want me to do. I'll do anything. Just tell me what you want me to do. And she's like, all right. She's like, I want you to pray the divine mercy chapel. I want you to pray the rosary. Um, and then she got me to go to, uh, it was, I, I don't remember now if it was a divine mercy. I know I went at some point. It might've been another healing mass I was at, but I, she took me to go to confession. And so I get like the examination of conscience and, and I get a, an envelope and I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is the first time I ever did a really, really good confession. Like really like looked at stuff that I had potentially done and been like, wow, you know, this is, this is intense. So I'm sitting there and I'm writing all my stuff down. I mean, I covered an envelope front and back and I'm, I'm just writing all this stuff down. And, uh, so we go into the confessional and I read it and, and the priest, he was, he was so cute. He goes, that might be one of the best confessions I've ever heard ever. And he, and he just, he, as a priest, he was just so, he was a young guy too. You could tell by his voice, he was younger. I never saw him. I never saw, I never saw him. I only was in the confessional and, and that was the only interaction I had with him. But, um, he was so, he was like that that was incredible. And so I was like, after that, again, Jesus just lit me on fire. Like I was so on fire for Jesus again. I didn't know what what to do with myself. And so here I have my two little girls and Bill is angry and he's hurt and I can't, I can't blame him. And so my mom's like, you know, you're going to have a lot of, you know, you're just going to have to show Bill. You're going to have to just basically live it. You know, you're, he's going to have to see a change in you, um, because of how, how you're living this out. And I was like, okay, but let me tell you, the enemy does not want this to happen. Right. So the, the battle just starts, you know, craziness. I mean, absolute craziness is just, you know, is basically raging. And, um, where, I mean, I had even like my, my oldest, my, she was probably, I don't know, three, three or four at the time. And at one point, like here, I have them praying. I have the girls praying the divine mercy and stuff. And Emma looks at me one day and she's just like, she said something about Jesus. Like, but it was so, it was like almost scary. Like what she said, it wasn't from her. It was like, it was to scare me. And I don't remember exactly. My mom just brought this up the other day. And uh, I said, I remember that. And there were so many times that I, I, I would call my mom and I would say, mom, this isn't going to work. I can't do this. I can't, I'm, I'm the one, you know, hauling the weight here. Bill doesn't want anything to do with me, mom. He hates me. And she's like, Nikki, trust Jesus and just keep praying. Just keep praying. Just keep praying and just trust. Jesus wants this marriage healed. I promise you he does. You have all of heaven on your side. Like just keep praying. And so you know, I would, I would fall down and then I would, you know, I'd be like, all right, I'll get back up again. I still love Jesus, but like, I would get discouraged. And, uh, so at one point, um, in the midst of this, we ended up, me and Bill were, um, 
got to the point where he said, please come with me. I have, I'm assigned to South Carolina. Please come with me and stay with me there. And it'll be really good. Let's just get away from here and we'll go figure stuff out. And so I agreed. So we went, we, we lived there for a little while. And while I was there, same thing, I call my mom and I'm like, mom, this is just, this is just not, I just can't do this. And uh, she said, Nikki, God is telling me he's, he's showing me something with Bill with a boat. And I'm like, a boat. I'm like, and, and I go, I don't know, I guess he likes boats. Like, I don't, I don't know what that means, mom. Like, and, uh, and she's like, just, I don't know what it means either. She's like, but he, God just keeps telling me something about a boat. And so, um, it was later I ended up being something really significant. So I ended up, I come back home by myself and, um, and then as I'm, again, I'm still, you know, I'm still, I'm fighting the battle. Like I'm still praying the divine mercy chapel constantly. I'm going to confession regularly. I fell in love with adoration. Never. I mean, I went to a Catholic school. I didn't even know what adoration was. That is really sad. <laughs> it's, it's really, really sad. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, my mom, again, here's my mom, you know, learning all these things, telling me all this stuff. And so I go to adoration and uh, all the time, mass every day, every time I could be, be at mass, I would. So two really cool things. So as I'm going, again, going to daily mass now. So the story of where I first had my encounter with the Holy Spirit, at the healing mass, and I saw Jesus, I'm telling you, large and in charge on that cross in my face. Well, I ended up working, the salon was next to that church. And one day I was like, I want to, I'm going to go back in there for like daily mass, whatever. That crucifix was not there. It was, it was not there. There was, a, there was a crucifix. It was not what I saw. And I just was like, did they like remodel? Like, I was so confused. And I was like, was this the church? Like, and I'm like, cause there's no way, like I even like looked at how I was walking like up the aisle and like where I would have been standing. And I'm like, how, like, where, where was that crucifix? I mean, it was enormous and there was Jesus so big on the crucifix. And, and I thought that was like, wow. Like Jesus knew like that was something I needed a visual of like that. And it was going to impact, it really impact me. And, and it, it really did. And, um, so that was super cool. So then that was one thing that, again, I looked back and I, I, was like super touched on. And then, uh, so as me and Bill are getting better and I can tell Bill is seeing, cause I, I, I go to Bill, right. And I'm like, as he's talking to me like a little bit and, and I said, Bill, you've got to start praying the divine mercy chapel. And he's like, you're crazy. Get out of here. You know, like you're a loony. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, you got to go to confession. You will feel so much better. Like a thousand pounds is going to be whipped, you know, weight is going to be lifted off you. Was he practicing at all at that during that time? He would no, he was really hurt. He was, he, he was probably to the point where he was probably questioning like, God, why, like, why is this happening? You know, his life, his life was really a mess. Mine was too, but poor Bill really like he, he, he did it. He ended up, so this was another grace from God. This is, this is really funny. So as we're in South Carolina, um, the Navy chaplain, Bill is confiding in him and telling him like, this is the stuff that's going on right now, like in our family. So he comes home one day and I remember I was in, playing in the bathroom and he comes in and he goes, Nick, I, I was talking to the, I was talking to the chaplain today. And he said, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, he's like, you're going to go to hell. And I was like, Bill, come on. <laughs> like dead serious. I'm like, I'm like, come on, come on. You know, that's not true. Like, and, uh, and again, I look back and laugh. I'm like, what was wrong with me? Right. Like, and so, but I was totally sincere. Totally like Bill, come on, that's crazy. Like, you know, the hell's that? You know, that's that's not that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> for those other people. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm literally committing adultery, but that's not for me. And uh so um, so anyway, so that was also that's always something I look back and laugh. So as you know, again, so as things are now again, he's I'm telling him, like, okay, Bill, now he can see, he can see me, I'm changing. And and uh I'm just really changing like a lot and he can see it and, and I'm trying not to push stuff down his throat. And, um, but I could see him really gradually, like, cause I had my own little apartment. I could see him. I could see him coming around like a little bit more staying, hanging out with the girls at my apartment and stuff. And so one day we're like standing by my doorway and, and he looks at me and he's like, how can I ever trust you again? You know, and I didn't blame him at that point. I mean, I 
gave him no reason to trust me whatsoever. And uh, he's like, I can never trust you again, ever. And I said, well, and I thought for a little while and I go, I'm not worried about hurting you anymore. I was like, I don't want to hurt God. And I was so serious and so sincere. And he just like looked at me like, he didn't even know what to say. And, and then later he told me, he said, I was so mad when you told me that because he's like, you don't care about me, but you, you know, you don't, but then, but the, the irony of that is like, as time went on, he said, right then and there, I did know I could start to trust you because it was bigger what you were loving and what you were involved with and what was helping you was bigger than me. And so he said, that was when I could actually, as mad as he was about it, he's like, I really could start to trust you at that point. And um, so then, so five years into our marriage, we renewed our vows. And even at that point, stuff was still, it was still rocky. It was uh, still building trust, um, you know, and, and even still things with Bill, like I was like, this is a joke. This is exactly why I didn't want to be here in the first place. You know, like the enemy's telling me that, you know, like, do you see what he's doing? Like, this is what you're, this is what you're signing up for, for the rest of your life. You know, is that, is this really what you want? And, uh, and so I, you know, again, I would go to my mom and say, mom, this is a joke. I'm like, this isn't, you know, this isn't. And, and again, this is five years into marriage, three years that were an absolute battle. And so I remember clear as day again, one day, I'm, uh, we're, we're at our house and, and I just remember, I just had this moment of just complete surrender. And I said, Jesus, I love you so much more than even I love Bill. And if I'm tortured the rest of my life and I'm let down, I don't care because I'm choosing you. And I know you're going to fill that hole because he already had, Jesus was already filling that hole. And, and, um, but I said, I know you want me to be married. I said, I know you want my marriage to work. And there was never abuse. Um, we barely actually, to be honest, we barely even yelled at each other. I can remember two times that, and it was like over spilling juice on wedding invitations. And I can't even remember another time, but there was never like brawls or was never like swearing or anything. And that was one of the things like my grandma, and my mom said to me, like, Nikki, you and Bill, like you guys are best friends. Like no matter what's going on, it, it, even if it's not perfect, she's like, you guys laugh together and have a good time. And that's like the best foundation of a marriage, you know? And my grandma, I remember my grandma, when I told her, you know, that me and Bill weren't doing good and we were going to separate, she goes, you want to, you want to repeat my same thing. She's like, you want to repeat my sins? You want to do the same thing as me? She goes, you think I like how, how stuff is right now? She goes, you don't think I would enjoy having my in-ground pool back with all my, you know, all my grandkids and, and swimming and all this stuff. And, um, you know, same thing. She's like, come on, Nick, like, this is crazy. And, um, you know, same kind of thing. And so, so anyway, so going back to, so our vows, we renewed our vows and stuff. And, and, um, so I'm, I'm at home and, and I had that experience where I just said, okay, Jesus, I know you want us to be together. I know you want us to be married. And I believe with my whole heart that all of heaven wants this for us too. And I believe that they will, they will help us and they're, they're going to help me. And I just felt like Jesus said to me, just trust me and just love me and don't worry about the rest. Just keep going. And so what started happening was I was like a little, you know, spiritually, like I, I was a little bit ahead, like Jesus would give me these little things, but then all of a sudden Bill would be right behind me. And for instance, I got to the point where I was like bad music, bad movies, anything inappropriate was just so, I, I just couldn't, it was just awful. I just couldn't, I had different, I had different vision. You know, I just, I just, I couldn't tolerate anymore. And, uh, and there was still things that Bill was watching and thought was funny or whatever. And, and it was inappropriate. It just wasn't funny to me. And I thought, oh man, Jesus, I don't want this in my home. I don't want my kids to see any of this garbage, you know? And so, um, within not even that long. And again, I, I really believe it was due to like pure surrender, to Jesus is, you know, okay, Jesus, I know you have my best interest at heart. I'm telling you what, not, it didn't take long. And next thing you know, Bill, Bill's attitude was, if I'm not watching with the kids, I'm not watching it. If I wouldn't sit down and watch it with Jesus, I'm not watching it. 
if I wouldn't listen to it with Jesus, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And, uh, so God was just, you know, given, giving me these, these wonderful, beautiful gifts. And, uh, so then we get pregnant with Landon. So he's the third one. After we renewed our vows, I became pregnant with Landon and, um, Bill was definitely like, he wasn't excited. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was, uh, a little challenging. Cause I, I, I was excited. I was like, oh, this is so great. You know? And I, I told him and he was not happy. And I thought, oh boy, this is again, going back into my dark place, you know, like this is not good. So, uh, but I just, you know, kept tr- trucking along. And so I was due, I found out I was pregnant with him on New Year's day. I was pregnant with, or I was going to be due with him September, like third. And so, uh, I went to a divine, so I'm obsessed by this point. I'm obsessed with divine mercy, like obsessed with St. Faustina. We're singing divine mercy chapel all the time, like three o'clock hour of prayer, like all the time. And, um, and so, uh, we went to a little, like they had like the, um, the, I think it was the Marian fathers came to like the church and, and we went there and they're talking all about divine mercy and St. Faustina and stuff. So St. Faustina's birthday is August 25th and they're saying it at the, at the talk. And so my really good friend was with me and, and she, she looks at me, she goes, Nick, you could have the baby on her birthday. And I was like, no way. Like, that's crazy. You know, there's, there's just no way. Like that would just be, that would be too much, you know? And, uh, sure enough, Landon was born on St. Faustina's birthday. And so we have that crazy miracle that happened. And just again, like Jesus being like, yep, like totally like this is so all divine mercy and, and then going back to my mom with the boat. So fast forward about eight years, um, we were heading, we, we bought, uh, we bought divine mercy the, or St. Faustina's diary. We bought it on CD and we we're listening to it in the, in the van. And, and so I put it in and, um, she, they started talking they're like, Oh, St. Faustina lived in, um, uh, Woods, Poland. And I'm like, huh, because the reason why this is so crazy as Landon is a baby and born and he's making like little goo goo gaga noises. One thing that he would say all the time was Woods. And we started calling him that like W U D G E. Like it makes no sense. It was not a thing. Like we just started calling him this and everyone would laugh and be like, what is that? Like, what are you guys even saying? That's crazy. And I'm like, I don't know. He just says it and it just became a nickname. And still to this day, he's 11 years old. It's his nickname. And so here we are. He's about eight years old at this point. We're listening to my mercy, you know, the diary and on the, on the, on the, the drive and, I could not believe when I heard Sister Faustina with Woods Poland. So I'm like, I call my mom. I go, mom, you are not going to believe this. I'm like, I just looked up what Woods, what Woods means in Polish. And it means boat. And my mom's like, you have got to be kidding me. I go, mom, no, like I, I like, I'm just like absolutely flabbergasted at this point. I'm like, I, I just can't believe it. And and when I tell you again, going back to like, you know, all, all this is all God's handiwork and, and that everything that's happened in our life and in our relationship has just been nothing to glorify him. And it was like ever, ever since, you know, Landon was born. I think that was really a big healing that happened with Bill. And we started going to these, um, it was like a life in the spirit kind of thing. It was very helpful towards the beginning of my reversion process, I should say. Um, I don't know if I would go that way right now. I'm, I've moved, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not there now, but as right then, like Jesus was definitely using that to, uh, to help us. And, um, but I remember one day we were, we were waiting in the parking lot. And again, I had here, I have Bill going with me and, um, you know, things are, things are getting better for sure. Still a little bit of, you know, trust and stuff that we need to work on, but, um, things are definitely getting better. And so we're sitting in the parking lot waiting to go in and Bill goes, Nick, that lady lied. And I'm like, what lady? So I'm thinking about what he's talking about. Well, in the midst of all the craziness, Bill's dad had sponsored us to go to this like marriage or treat kind of thing. But we were so, we were so broken and in such a bad place at that point. Like Bill was just 
he, he, again, same thing. He wouldn't even look at me. He was just, he was just really, really angry. And, but on the drive there, our wedding song, which is not a popular wedding song, um, especially on the radio, it came on, on the drive there. And I thought, oh, wow. Like, that is pretty, that's, that gave me hope. Cause at that point I really wanted things to be better. And so hearing that on the drive there, I was like, okay, Jesus, like I've always, Jesus was like, listen, I know this is going to get crazy when you guys are at this thing, it's not going to be good, but just remember this, you know, just remember I'm here, I'm walking with you. And, and the marriage retreat was terrible. I was cry- pretty much crying the whole time. telling my mom, this is crazy. I shouldn't be here. He hates my guts, you know? And uh, so there's a couple that's speaking at the, at the retreat. And the youngest ones we could relate to, they were probably in their sixties and we're, you know, we're probably, I don't know what, 25 at this point, you know, like we're pretty young still. And, uh, so at one point Bill goes, Nikki, I just watched this lady up on here talking, telling us her story, crying her eyes out. He's like, I'm not going to live like that the rest of my life. He's like, this happened to this lady like 30 years ago. He goes, I'm not doing this. He goes, I'm leaving. And I said, no, wait, let me go get this lady. I'm like, we'll talk to her. And she, and so in my head, I'm like, she's going to tell Bill that, no, no, that's not the case at all. Like, and I, it's going to be great, right? Like, so everything is going to be fixed. Bill's going to stay. So I go to get her and I'm like, Bill's got, Bill wants to leave. He doesn't want to be here. I'm like, face, and she knows, like, she knows what he's thinking and feeling. And, and uh, he's like, if you can tell me, that I'm not going to feel like the hurt that I feel and stuff anymore. And one day it's going to go away. He said, then I'll stay. And she looked at him and she said, it, it's not, it's not going to go away. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding. Like, that's it. She just put the nail in the coffin. Like there's no hope at this point, you know? And so he's like, okay, we're gone. So I said, all right, well, there's nothing else I can do at this point. So we went back up our stuff and uh, he was happy after that. We went for tacos and, I think, I think everything started going on the up and up after that. I don't know what happened, but so, so that was the experience. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So God bless this poor lady. Right. So here we are again, going back to, you know, we're at the, we're at the life in the spirit sitting in the parking lot. And he says to me, that lady lied. And again, I'm kind of scared because I'm like, what is he bringing up? Like, you know, I I have no idea what this even means. And I said, well, you know, what, like what lady? And he's like, the lady from the marriage retreat. And I was like, oh no. I'm like, why would you, like, what do you mean? And he's like, she told me that all those feelings would never leave. And she's like, and he said, they're gone. He said, they're completely gone. Like all, all that. And that wasn't even, that wasn't even that far in. Like you, you know, people say like time heals, which yeah, it does. But like Jesus's time was like, man, it was quick. And I just, you know, I just couldn't believe, like, I just had this like sigh of relief. And I was like, wow, like, that is so amazing. Like, I can't believe he just told me that. And, you know, she, he said, I, I thought that I would never be able to look at you or, and be hurt. And he goes, and it's all gone. He's like, the resentment, the hurt, it's gone. It's completely gone. When and so. And what, what year was that? Probably right after Landon. So probably 2000 and. 12 or 13, probably around, probably like 2013. Is that, is that around the time that you guys shared your story? I think you were mentioning that you had shared your story um, years ago. I'm just wondering if like, yeah, fire in both of you at that point. Right. I mean, he had, yes. Yeah. He had that grace come over him. You had an incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, we, so the last time when I did the Magnificat talk, that was, um, I had just had Owen and Owen was born in 2015. Mm -hmm. So, so it was, and, 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 you know, so it it was, it was so, uh, it was very scary for me because I talked about a lot of things that I had never really shared with anyone. And I just felt like God was like, you know, Nick, you, it's, you know, I need you to, I need you to share this with people, you know, and, and at the time too, cause now it's like, I talk about it. It's like, it's like a different person. It's, I'm not even the same person at all. You know, it's so far removed from like who I am today. And that's the importance of sharing it truly to be able to. Mm-hmm. Yes. You realize mm-hmm. I felt like I had a scarlet letter here and, 
and yeah. I'm going to talk about yeah. this. Oh, I had the Scarlet Letter. Oh, I had it. Oh, yeah. That is huge, though, to share that. I, so I interrupted you earlier, and you were saying, I want to go back just for a second. I think there was something else there where you had asked Bill if, or you, you, you instructed him, you're like, you need to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Yeah. And then you ended up saying there was that moment where he said, I don't know if I could ever trust you again. Was there a connection? Mm -hmm. Did that happen pr prior to him asking you that? And what was the big, what, what was so big about it at that point? I know your mom had asked you to do it and you yeah. felt that there was grace. Yeah. I think, um, I think what, honestly, I think if I can, if I can remember correctly, I think him, him seeing such a dramatic change in me was what started leading him to, like, I got him, I did get him to go to confession. And, uh, and I think, again, that was probably, you know, once you get over that hurdle, right? Like, once you can get someone to, to, to be in line with church teaching and to be like embracing the sacraments, like, that's when God can really start to work. And I'll never forget when we first started to get back together. And I said to him, I said, Bill, I know you're going to think this is really crazy. I said, but we like, we can't use like any form of birth control anymore ever again. And he was like, Nick, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard. Like he literally said that he was like that, you know, he's like, that's too much. I go, Bill, I'm telling you, like, if that is what our church teaches and here I am, how old? 24, five. Yeah, probably around 24, 25 years old. And here I'm learning that for the first time. So actually, Barbara McWiggin, who is from EWTN, by the grace of God, I do not know how I managed this. I ended up with her cell phone number. Do not ask me how. And I called her one night and I said, I'm telling her my whole story about what's going on with me and Bill and the insanity of everything. And she's like, honey, you need to tell him your job is to get him to heaven. And I was like, wow. That is so like, that's deep. I'm like, wow, like that's good. Okay. I think he'll, I think he'll be able to like understand that. Like, that's good. And again, never was I taught like, yeah, that's actually the purpose of marriage. Like you get married to help your spouse get to heaven. That's the whole point. And here's my light bulb moment. And, and, um, and she was so wonderful. And I kept in touch with her for a while and kept her posted with like how things were going. And, and I just, I really love her. And, um, so I went in and told Bill and I'm like, I have to get like, my job is to get you to heaven and you have to get me to heaven, you know? And, and so that was like, that, that helped him to, to definitely see better, um, you know, in a different things in a different light. And now, you know, I have, I always laugh. I'm like, now I have a husband who wants to repopulate the world. You know, he, he wants to have a billion kids. <laughs> so I'm like, I went from one who was like afraid to have two to now he's like, we, we literally have a 15 passenger van. He's like, let's go. We got to fill this baby up, you know? So, um, but he loves it. And he lo like, he loves, you know, and, and again, it's like a lot of people run into fear of like finances and money and like, well, we can't afford that. And every time we would have a baby or something would happen, it's like phone sheen would say with every baby comes a bread basket. And it's so true, you know, like, and I'm like, listen, we don't have to be rich as long as we can feed the kids. Like, <laughs> you know, we're fine. And, um, and Bill grew in trust immensely in that department. Like, you know, God's not going to hang you out to dry. Like a baby is a gift. He is never going to just, you know, he's never going to be like, Oh, here's some babies. And you guys are going to start, you know, like, <laughs> that's just, that's just not happening. So, um, so, you know, now, you know, obviously Bill's in, in, a, in a completely different place with that, but we really just, um, and like I said, I would be a little step ahead. Like I was so thirsty for, um, learning my faith, you know, and, and again, talking about like St. Augustine, like, man, did his, your heart is restless until it rests with me. Right. Like that was, that was my life. Like as soon as Jesus was there to fill that hole, that restlessness, it was like, yep. you know, it's just, oh, it's just, I'm like that, just that small thing. And, and Bill always too, he relates to that, you know, so much. And, um, but I think him seeing the change in me, being able to trust me was what really inspired him and helped him to keep, you know, growing and learning with me. What is the message um, that when you do have a chance to share this with 
people that you know? Like, what's the message yeah. for, I guess, young moms? And what's the message for married couples? I mean, you've certainly said that through the testimony, but like, if you were to yeah. have a few minutes, yeah. well, what would be the, the, big, the big thing that you emphasize with them? I would say ultimately, so a big, some big things that I really try to emphasize when I talk to people is um, people don't think that anyone can change. And people can't change by themselves. You can't. Like, you can only change with Jesus. Um, and that goes in all different kind of departments. But um, I would say overall that to not buy into the lie of, you know, so easily getting for marriage, not so easily getting swept away by uh, worldly, you know, worldly, like, this This isn't looking good. This isn't filling my, my hole. So I'm going to go look somewhere else, you know, people can change. It's just in the power of prayer, um, how it really, I mean, there is so many signal graces that Jesus gets still, I mean, on a daily basis, like where I just, I'm like, Lord, I don't deserve, I don't deserve any of this. I, did, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why, like the things that happen in our life happen, like, and now I have a husband. So again, going back to where Bill was, where I was, and where Bill is now, learning, again, like learning our faith and realizing like how a husband's role is so important, like for him to be in the state of grace, for him to be holy, for him to not bring ugly things into the house, um, you know, not watching inappropriate things, not wa even bad movies with bad words or, or music, like I think that is how people will say to me, your kids are so good. You know, you're doing such a good job. And I'm like, it's really not me. I could, tr I can strive for holiness all I want. Um, but ultimately if that door of grace isn't being opened up through bill and it's not being poured in through him, you know, it's, it's a lot harder. Um, and I don't, I know for a fact, like the kids would not be who they are. I mean, and let's just, you know, and, and I'll even give you from, from where we were to where we are now, um, Bill is such a holy husband. I mean, I have such, I have the husband, I have a husband now that people, you couldn't even like, you could not even write it up. You know, it's, it's like, it's, you just wouldn't even believe it. You wouldn't believe where he was and who he is now. And like, and you know, he has so much to share too with, you know, all the, the amazing things he's overcome, but, um, even with my kids, the, the fruit of what has come out. And again, from that time of like, even eight years ago till now, um, the fruit of, of, of that, of what has happened in our, in our marriage and our relationship and the beauty of the sacraments. And all, I mean, we go to confession, like at the minimal every other week, um, you know, the boys serve mass. My oldest daughter has gone to visit the Benedictine nuns two times. She's, she's, pretty convinced that she has a vocation to, to join them. And so, you know, you look at all these things, it's like, this is nothing I've done, right? It's, it's nothing. This is all a product of putting your complete and full trust in Jesus's divine mercy is really, is really what it comes down to. Um, and, and like you said, to feel that compassion and be able to yeah. exude that to other people. And yes. Let me imagine there, there are a lot of people I'm sure that are going to love hearing this message, um, the redemptive aspect, the point that where you say, why, why me? You know, so you go from saying, yeah. why, so I think of Bill when he was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why me? yeah. And then yeah. you guys are being redeemed and you're saying, why me? How, how, how did this yeah. happen? So true. That's so true. Great. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. That is an excellent point. Yeah. Like, so, like complete different opposites of like, I mean, just to go from, and, and I think too, like I, if God can pull me out, I mean, if I had, you know, if we had a whole day to talk about like the details of like the, the things that have happened in, in my life and, and the bad place I, you know, that I had been and stuff, if G and, and I say this too, if, if this is very, I think this is very, very crucial. I think what Bill, because Jesus, the stuff that was going on with Bill, 
Jesus was giving me the grace to be like, I'll deal with this. I wasn't angry or hurt with by him. I just was like, Jesus is is gonna, gonna keep keep me afloat. But with Bill, when he was so hurt and he really thought that he could never, ever forgive me. And again, this poor lady who's been suffering for how many years? 30, 30 years? Yeah. No healing. That poor lady's not healed, right? So so I think I think another very, very important important point is that no matter how bad things get, now again, you know, obviously domestic violence is not an option. Like, and there was none of that. There was absolutely none of that. But when it comes to, you know basically the things that me and Bill were dealing with and having Jesus be able to heal and change all the things that we thought were just impossible. Like, and I think that's the big stressor where people are like, no, this is impossible. This is impossible. You can't change. Um, Now, again, I, I was given such a grace by having Bill be able to be on my, you know, he was, he's on my faith page. You know, it wasn't, I couldn't have done that by myself. That's a special grace. It doesn't mean you can't pray and sacrifice for your spouse to do that. Um, because you can, I mean, you, you totally can, like you can pray, like prayer is so powerful and, but there is no one that can change. And I always say this, the stuff that went on between me and Bill, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like simple things like, Oh, you know, we had like a little argument, you know, or I don't like how he does this, or I feel unloved, or I feel this, or I feel that it was, it was, I mean, we did very, very hurtful things to each other. And it, the fact, and so I just, I always say like, there's nothing, if Bill can forgive me, if I can forgive him, there's nothing Jesus cannot help you work out that you, we have no, as of today, we have zero resentment. I mean, there is no animosity. There is no resentment. There is no hurt. It is, you know, not at all. Not one sliver of that because we gave it to Jesus and he healed it. There's, and that's, that's the only way. That's that's the way I was going to say, but that gives so much hope to so many marriages that are wondering, can, can this be salvaged? Yes. Again, excluding some of the extreme cases. Yes. Yes. Millions of marriages. You don't have to be. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. There are millions of marriages that are probably in the category where they say, whether it's emotional abuse, what anything that you just described, and they're saying, yes. Mm -hmm. How many? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. How many? I, we just need to pray. For yes. Those. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. People, because I can't even finish the thought. It's 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 got to be very difficult, and I see, yeah. hear everything that you're saying, what yeah. Bill went through, what you went yeah. through. Yeah. Um, and it's certainly not something to just dismiss and say, "Well, you snap your fingers and everything's going to be fine." But we yeah. got to pray for those marriages because every marriage that fails, it makes society weaker. Yeah. And yeah. it makes children suffer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I want to yeah. leave it there unless you have, yeah. final, you know, any final parting words. No. I think, I think that's, I think that's good. I would just say like, don't like, if you, if you don't give up on Jesus, like, and, and, and it's not, it doesn't, and, and also too, this is my thing I want to stress. Once you, you know, you surrender and you want to live, you want to live your life for God. And you're like, okay, God, like, I want to do this your way. It doesn't mean things are going to be a cakewalk every day. And I think that people get, sadly, they get caught up into that. Like, as soon as like, you know, like I experienced that little hurdle, right? Like something, something will happen or pop up and it's like, okay, this is too much, you know? Um, even now, I mean, we have been, you know, on fire, loving Jesus, you know, having a very blessed life for the last, I would say, you know, really since Landon. So for the last 11 years, really things have been, and just getting better. They just keep getting better by God's grace. And, um, and I would say that, you know, there's just, yeah, there's, there's nothing. If you really surrender it, 
there's nothing that Jesus can't do. Like in, in just trusting, really just trusting in, in what he can do and loving him. And, and it's just, it's really, it really has been really amazing. And we don't deserve it. Like we don't deserve it one bit. What he's, what he has saved me from, and not just marriage wise, like my whole, my whole little life, even before that. Um, well, now if he, he can, you know, foundation that you were saying you didn't have, he gave you that foundation. And yeah. once again, I got to say the importance of you sharing everything, um, all those mistakes, that's really bold. It's really important for a lot of people to hear, uh, because society judges. Yeah all the time and he's yeah. not for the righteous yeah and we have to remember that and pray for those that are on yeah. similar journey so i just want to thank you Nikki. yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you, no thank you thank you bill as well yeah yeah, yeah for sure it's a big deal to kind of just be willing to put it out there so really yeah that. yeah so, everyone please no um but thank you for, for watching and uh, please share this. And uh, until next time, take care and God bless.